when you clearly don't work somewhere, but people seem to think you do. Welcome to this episode of I Don't Work Here, Lady. Our first one is from Scaminator. This happened about 30 years ago. I was definitely the asshole in this situation, but in my defense, I was five. My family's home phone number was one digit off from a sporting goods store in my town called Joe Jones. Naturally, we'd get a fair number of calls from people with the wrong number. We had caller ID, so my parents would see an unfamiliar number on the ringing phone and say, Looks like it might be someone trying to call Joe Jones again. They'd pick up and say, Hello? I'm sorry, you have the wrong number. And then just hang up and say, Yep, Joe Jones again. Now, since I was five, I failed to recognize two key things about this situation. One, Joe Jones was the name of a store, not a person. Easy mistake to make. Two, that it was different people calling each time. Since my parents could always tell when it was a call for Joe Jones, I thought it was always the same number that they kept recognizing. I had only ever used the speed dial, ask your parents what that was, to make an outgoing call. So I assumed some friend of Joe had just misprogrammed their phone to call us instead of him and was really lazy about fixing it. I was annoyed this person kept bothering us. Then came the day. My dad was at work and my mom was home with me. She was busy with something when the phone rang and asked me to answer it. I went over to the kitchen phone, reached up to pull it off the hook and said, Hello? Hi, is this Joe Jones? I was finally talking to the person who had been bothering us. I summoned up all the righteous fury young me could muster and said very sternly into the phone, No, he doesn't live here. Stop calling us. My mom jumped up and snatched the phone from me to apologize to the caller and smooth things over. After she hung up, she took the time to talk to me to make sure I understood what was actually going on and how to be polite over the phone. She wasn't angry. These days, I always try to be polite on the phone, regardless of the situation. I think back to this incident as being the day that I learned that lesson. Thanks, Mom. I miss you. I mean, being a kid, it's definitely forgivable to make that kind of mistake, and back then, it had to be annoying to have the phone constantly ringing when it wasn't somebody actually trying to get a hold of your family. This next one is by Don't Ask Me Chit. Nothing major, just a post to say that not all people asking for help assume that you work at the store. Sometimes people just need help. I was doing my grocery shopping, hoping to hurry up and get out before the evening rush. As I rounded a corner, an elderly lady was blocking the way. I said excuse me and was going to go around her when she looked at me and said, Can you help me? I could not bring myself to say, I don't work here. I just said, of course. She needed help reaching for some items on a higher shelf. I'm only 5'6", so I had to reach on my tippy toes, but I was glad to help. One item I couldn't reach, so I enlisted the help of another shopper who grabbed the item with a smile. She said thank you and went on her way. Team effort. I don't even know how many times I've been asked to get something off a higher shelf for people. I usually don't have a problem doing it because it's not that hard to do, but if somebody's going to be demanding or things like that, then obviously I wouldn't help them. Reading a wholesome story like this though is nice instead of the negative that seems to prevail. This next one is from CWU007. So this just happened at work today and I thought I'd share it. I'm a shift supervisor for a retail drugstore chain. Regardless of your position at the store, your shirt has the company name and logo on it. On occasion, the store manager will wear business casual if he has something to do outside the store. We all wear a lanyard with the company logo on it with our name tag and scan card at the end. When you walk in, there are three cash registers next to each other. About three feet in front of the registers is a three-foot wall with candy, magazines, and other impulse buys. Customers wait their turn in that three-foot space. 
Quite often, customers with a quick question will be on the other side of the wall to ask their question. So today, the lunch rush happens, and I jump onto a register to help my front-end cashier get the line moving. As we're ringing customers up, a customer wearing business clothes approaches the wall. Let's call him John. John has a dress shirt, tie, and name tag pinned to his shirt. From the design of the name tag, I could tell he works at the hospice nearby. Quite a few of their employees are our customers, and a lot of their patients get prescriptions from us. John says, There's a man over there that is looking for men's hair dye. I told him I don't work here, but you're busy, so I'll help him. I tell John while ringing up a customer, Aisle 2 between the men's razors and the deodorant. John responds, Where's aisle 2? I say, right behind you. John sees the aisle marker and goes to help the man. I can see aisle 2 from where I'm standing, and I see John helping a much older man find and pick out hair dye. The older man proceeds with his shopping, and so does John. Next time I see John, he's finished paying for his stuff and leaving when I run up to him and say, thank you. John waves and leaves. I love reading about the wholesome stuff, seeing people helping other people, not making a big deal about it, not demanding help from others. This is how things should work. Unfortunately, the majority of the time, this is not how it goes. This next one is by Halcyon Siskin. My friend and I often hang out in the form of running errands together. Last week, I accompanied her on a short trip and she wanted to try on some stuff at Lululemon. I was just there for company and moral support, so I was happily exchanging sizes and colors for her and just chatting through the door while she tried stuff on. At some point, I take a seat and start doing the wordle. A woman accompanying her daughter, maybe, says to me, Excuse me? Okay, so we've been watching you running around, waiting for this one woman. Meanwhile, we've been waiting for five minutes. Can we get a room or what? For some reason, I was compelled to apologize and then say I didn't work there. She didn't follow up with an apology or anything. Just said, okay. What is it like to be that bold? Well, you know, if you ever went up and tried to ask them, they'd feel so fucking entitled that nothing at all is wrong with what they're doing, that you're expected to wait on them hand and foot, that their behavior is perfectly acceptable, even though the world knows it's not. And our final one is from Deleted. Before lockdown, I went to the salon to get my hair done. After the cut, the stylist had to leave to go to the bathroom. While she was in there, I got up and was checking out my new do in the mirror and thinking about what more I might ask for. I turned around and Karen was sitting in the chair and before I could say anything, she gave me her style request. Don't remember what it was, other than it wasn't the stereotypical Karen cut. I said sorry, I don't work here, I'm just waiting for the stylist to finish me up and the front desk employee came back and told Karen that not only did she need an appointment, she couldn't just walk in and sit down in one of the stations. Karen's response was to say, my station was open, and the stylist, me, was just primping herself in the mirror, so she must be free to do her hair. The employee said, she doesn't work here, you need to check in at the front desk. Karen said, She's wearing the apron of the company. She works here and she should be doing her job rather than prettying herself in the mirror. I was wearing an apron with the company name on it. It's the one all clients wear to protect their clothing. While Karen was arguing with the front desk employee, my stylist was done, came out and began asking me, Is it okay or do you need changes? Karen told her to shut up and wait her turn. I said everything was good and walked up to pay, Karen yelling at me the whole time to come back and do her hair. She was still yelling as I paid and walked out, but not before I saw Karen sit down for a cut and have the apron put on her, to which she shouted out, She's wearing the apron, must be an employee. I should have cut her hair. Arts and crafts were always my worst activity at summer camp. It might have looked interesting. 
The stylist told me next time I went in that Karen told her that she hopes her co-worker, me, was going to lose her job for her behavior. And no matter how many times she was told I was just a customer, Karen didn't believe her. I can't even imagine the kind of disturbance that Karen caused to the entire establishment, on top of the fact that all the shit they're spouting has been told the complete opposite by the people that actually work there, it just makes you wonder how that person gets up every morning, puts on their clothes, and actually leaves the house successfully. Alright, that's enough stories for the day. Well that wraps up this episode of I Don't Work Here Lady. If you liked the video, please drop a like, share my content on all of your social media, Subscribe if you haven't already and make sure to hit that bell so you're notified every time I upload. And drop a comment down below. It really helps with the algorithm and helps new people find my channel. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my patrons. Have a great day and stay safe out there.